Hello students, in today's video we are going to study pharmacology of sulfonamides and co-trimoxazole. Now sulfonamides were the first synthetic antimicrobial agents uh, that were effective against bacterial infections. So sulfonamides are used in the treatment of bacterial infections. Now very important to remember that bacteria synthesize their own folic acid while humans get the folic acid from diet. Now this folic acid is essential for the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines and purines and pyrimidines are the building blocks of DNA. Now sulfonamides inhibit synthesis of folic acid in bacteria. So this inhibits synthesis of DNA and thus prevents bacterial growth. Now since sulfonamides inhibit growth of bacteria, they are termed as bacteriostatic. Now sulfonamides are classified as short acting with a half life of 4 to 8 hours, for example sulfadiazine. Then intermediate acting sulfonamides with a half life of 8 to 12 hours, for example sulfamethoxazole. Then long acting with a very half life of around 7 days, for example sulfadoxine sulfamethopyrazine. Then topically used uh, sulfonamides are sulfaacetamide sodium, uh, mephinite, silver sulfadiazine. Then sulfasalazine. Sulfasalazine is the sulfonamide that is used in the treatment of ulcerative colitis and rheumatoid arthritis. So this is the classification of sulfonamides. Now let's see to the antibacterial spectrum of sulfonamides. Now, sulfonamides are uh, bacteriostatic, they inhibit bacterial growth and uh, these are bacteriostatic uh, against uh, mainly gram-positive bacteria, then uh, uh, gram-negative bacteria, then chlamydia causing eye infections like uh, trachoma, conjunctivitis, then uh, Mm, chlamydia uh, causing the sexually transmitted disease that is lymphogranuloma uh, venereum. Uh, these are also effective against nocardia, mm, actinomyces and a parasitic uh, and a protozoan parasite that is a toxoplasma gondii. So this is the antibacterial spectrum of sulfonamides. Uh, now let's uh, study important pharmacokinetic features of sulfonamides. Sulfonamides are rapidly and completely absorbed from the GIT. Now plasma protein binding ranges from 10 to 95 percent amongst different members. Sulfonamides that are highly protein bound are longer acting. Sulfonamides are widely distributed in the body, they reach cerebrospinal fluid and they also cross placenta. And these are metabolized in the liver by the process of acetylation. And uh, these acetylated metabolites are generally less soluble in the acidic urine and therefore they get precipitated in the urine forming crystals. And uh, this causes crystal urea, that is presence of crystals in the urine. And uh, sulfonamides are primarily excreted in the kidneys. Uh, now let's study therapeutic uses of sulfonamides. Now many bacteria have developed resistance to sulfonamides. So sulfonamides alone are not used for the treatment of systemic infections. However, sulfamethoxazole in combination with trimethoprim is bactericidal. That means this combination kills the bacteria and it is used systemically for the treatment of bacterial and parasitic protozoan infections. Now, in addition to this, sulfadoxine in combination with pyrimethamine. So, this combination is used for the treatment and prophylaxis that is prevention of chloroquine resistant malaria. Then uh, topically acting uh, sulfonamides that is sulfonamide sodium uh, 10 to 30 percent can be used as an eye drop for the treatment of eye infections like trachoma and conjunctivitis. Then silver sulfadiazine or mephinide uh, these are also 
topical sulfonamides are used for preventing infections on the burn surfaces. Now here silver sulfadiazine slowly releases silver ions and these silver ions are mainly responsible for the antimicrobial action of uh, silver sulfadiazine. Another sulf uh, sulfonamide sulfasalazine uh, it splits into sulfapyridine and 5-amino uh, salicylic acid. Now here 5-amino uh, salicylic acid uh, produces anti-inflammatory effect in the colon and therefore it is used uh, in the treatment of ulcerative colitis while sulfapyridine is absorbed systemically in the blood and it is used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. So these are some of the uses of sulfonamides. Uh, now let us uh, discuss adverse effects of uh, sulfonamides that are relatively common and uh, these are gastrointestinal uh, adverse effects that are usually manifested as uh, nausea, vomiting and epigastric pain. Then hypersensitivity reactions can occur in 2 to 5 percent of patients and these hypersensitivity reactions are manifested as uh, rashes skin rashes, urticaria that is itchy skin rashes and fever. Then uh, use of sulfonamides can cause photosensitization and uh, the skin becomes abnormally sensitive to sunlight and UV rays. So exposure to sun should be avoided. Now in addition to this serious uh, skin reactions like uh, Steven Johnson syndrome and exfoliative dermatitis has also been reported with the use of sulfonamides. Then uh, hepatitis can occur in around 0.1% uh, patients treated with uh, sulfonamides. Then uh, crystal urea as uh, discussed can also occur uh, depending upon the dose of sulfonamides. Then uh, topical sulfonamides can cause contact sensitization. Now in addition to this uh, hemolytic anemia can occur in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficient individuals. Now sulfonamides can cause carnicterus in newborns especially in the premature babies. Now sulfonamides as uh, are highly protein bound uh, what they do is this that they displace bilirubin from the plasma protein binding site. So this bilirubin uh, comes in the blood and the concentration of bilirubin increases in the baby's blood and uh, this bilirubin then damages the brain of baby and uh, this is termed as the carnicterus. So these are the main adverse effects of sulfonamides. Now since every drug or every medication is associated with the adverse effects which could be very severe so it's always advisable to consume drugs in consultation with the physician. Now some important drug interactions of uh, sulfonamides. Now as already discussed sulfonamides are highly protein bound. So sulfonamides uh, they bind to the proteins which causes displacement of uh, drugs like phenytoin, tolbutamide, warfarin, uh, methotrexate from the protein binding sites. So this increases, uh, this increases concentration of these drugs in the plasma uh, which can cause toxicity. So this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, sulfonamides. So now let us discuss pharmacology of uh, cotrimoxazole. Uh, now as already discussed uh, sulfonamides alone are not used in the treatment of systemic infections. Now, cotrimoxazole is a fixed dose combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole in 1 is to 5 ratio. That is, for example, 80 mg of trimethoprim combined with 400 mg of sulfamethoxazole. Where sulfamethoxazole, as we know, is an intermediate acting sulfonamide and trimethoprim is a diamino pyrimidine derivative that is bacteriostatic like sulfamethoxazole. But when they are combined together, they exert bactericidal action. So now let's discuss mechanism of action of 
co-trimoxazole. Now, by now we know that uh, bacteria synthesize their own folic acid. Now, para-aminobenzoic acid, in short, PABA. PABA is a precursor to synthesize folic acid. So, PABA combines with pteridine and enzyme dihydroteroate synthetase catalyzes the reaction and dihydroteroic acid is produced. Now, this dihydroteroic acid combines with glutamate to produce dihydrofolic acid. Now, enzyme dihydrofolate reductase converts dihydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid. And tetrahydrofolic acid is required by the bacteria for the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines that are the components of DNA. So, Tetrahydrofolic uh, acid is essential for the synthesis of uh, DNA by the bacteria. So, uh, this is how a bacteria synthesizes tetrahydrofolic acid from PABA. Now, look at these molecular structures. This is the molecular structure of paraminobenzoic acid that is PABA and this is the structure of sulfonamide. Now, both these structures, they are similar. Now, sulfamethoxazole being a sulfonamide has structure similar to PABA. In other words, we can say sulfonamides are structural analogs of PABA. Now, sulfamethoxazole is a component of uh, co-trimoxazole. Now, sulfamethoxazole being a structural analog of PABA, uh, this sulfamethoxazole gets incorporated in place of PABA and this results in the uh, synthesis of altered or modified or non-functional folic acid. Now in addition to this, sulfamethoxazole inhibits the enzyme dihydroteroate synthetase. Uh, so this also prevents synthesis of uh, folic acid in, in the bacteria. So uh, this is the mechanism by which uh, sulfamethoxazole inhibits synthesis of folic acid in the bacteria. Then trimethoprim, trimethoprim inhibits bacterial dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. So as co trimoxazole is a combination of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim, it causes sequential block. That means first this enzyme is inhibited, followed by this another important enzyme is inhibited. So co-trimoxazole causes sequential blockage of enzymes required for bacterial folic acid synthesis. So this sequential blockage produces synergistic effect and therefore the combination of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim is bactericidal. Now in addition to this uh, because of the sequential blockage there is slow development of uh, bacterial resistant to co-trimoxazole compared to compared to either drugs used alone. So, this is the mechanism of action of co-trimoxazole. Now, co-trimoxazole is bactericidal. Antibacterial spectrum of uh, co-trimoxazole is similar to that of sulfonamides. But uh, co-trimoxazole is active against a broader range of bacteria. So, the additional organisms covered by co-trimoxazole are Salmonella typhi, Seracia, Klebsiella, Anterobacter, uh, then Yersinia, Anterocolitica, and a fungus, Nemocystis gyrovesi. Now, cotrimoxazole is also effective against uh, sulfonamide resistant strains of uh, Staphylococcus aureus, then Streptococcus pyogenes, then Shigella, Anteropathogenic E. coli, Haemophilus influenza, Gonococci, and Meningococci. Uh, now, let's study adverse effects of uh, co-trimoxazole. Now, all adverse effects of uh, sulfonamides can also uh, be produced by co-trimoxazole. Now, co-trimoxazole can cause 
folate deficiency that can lead to megaloblastic anemia. Then uh, blood dyscrasia that is the disorder of uh, blood can also occur due to cotrimoxazole. Cotrimoxazole is, in, uh, is a contraindicated in pregnancy because of the teratogenic risk then it can cause neonatal hemolysis that means it can cause breakdown of red blood cells in newborn then it can also produce methemoglobinemia that means uh, a disorder of hemoglobin now uh, as the cotrimoxazole is uh, excreted by the kidneys dose of uh, cotrimoxazole should be reduced in renal impairment now, high doses of uh, cotrimoxazole can cause high incidence of fever, rashes and uh, bone marrow hypoplasia. Now, diuretics if given with uh, cotrimoxazole can cause thrombocytopenia. Now, cotrimoxazole causes a greater risk of uh, bone marrow toxicity in elderly. So, these are the adverse effects of cotrimoxazole. Uh, now, let us uh, uh, study uses of uh, cotrimoxazole. Now, cotrimoxazole is used in the treatment of uncomplicated urinary tract infections including acute cystitis that is inflammation of urinary bladder due to bacterial infection and also in the treatment of prostatitis that is the inflammation of prostate gland. Then uh, cotrimoxazole is used in the prophylaxis that is prevention and treatment of pneumonia caused by pneumocystis uh, gyrovesi uh, in patients uh, in AIDS patient and also uh, in patients with the neutropenia because these are the patients more susceptible to infections. Then uh, cotrimoxazole is very effective in the treatment of nocardiosis caused by the nocardia. Then uh, treatment of toxoplasmosis that is an infection caused by protozoan parasite uh, toxoplasma gondii. Then in sexually transmitted disease cancroid, uh, cotrimoxazole can be used as an alternative to ceftriazone or azithromycin or ciprofloxacin. Then uh, treatment of respiratory tract infections. Now cotrimoxazole treats upper and lower respiratory tract infections including chronic bronchitis. Then uh, facio maxillary infections that is uh, infections of uh, face, jaw and mouth. Then uh, otitis media caused by gram positive cocci and haemophilus influenza. Then uh, cotrimoxazole can also be used as an alternative to fluoroquinolones in the treatment of bacterial diarrheas and dysentery caused by severe and invasive infections by E. coli, then Shigella, non-typhoid Salmonella and Yersinia anterocolitica. So, this is in brief on pharmacology of sulfonamides and cotrimoxazole. Please note information provided in this video is only for informative academic purpose. For the uh, use of sulfonamides or cotrimoxazole, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.